Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of the City Confessions. Today is going to be a really, really interesting episode because I have Mariana Monks. She is a New Yorker and the host of the podcast Gossip Nista. Our names are similar. We're both New Yorkers. We both have podcasts talking about New York. So it is meant to be that we are connected. Why don't you introduce yourself to the listeners? Tell us who you are, what you do, and of course, your relationship with New York. Yes. Well, thank you, Marianne, again. So yeah. happy to be here. And you were on point with everything you said, right? We have a lot of similarities. So kind of just to um, dive into, again, who I am. So as you noted, I'm Marianne Monks. And first and foremost, I think I'd like to say I'm a wife. And then I'm a fairly new New Yorker. I'm not a native. <laughs> so um, that would be that. And um you know, what I do is I'm a podcaster, as you noted, and I have a podcast called Gossip Nista. And it all started from my love of New York City, um, you know, for when I actually moved here, I, I needed a, a resource and outlet to kind of just ask questions to New Yorkers to learn more about the city, how to navigate it, tips and tricks. And so that's what my podcast is about. And um, my relationship with New York is, um, I would say, just intense, right? Um, passionate, uh, just exploratory. I, I tell my husband, it's kind of like my love affair and he's like, mm, he's okay with that one. But yeah. yeah. That, oh, I, I love it. I love hearing that because I feel like we, again, we're similar, but we offer two different perspectives. Like for me, my podcast is getting other people living in New York to just chit chat. Um, let's dive deeper. And I feel like I haven't, you know, really dived into your podcast yet, but yours is maybe a little more from, I don't want to say an outsider's perspective, but almost educating people in a way of like what it's like to like live in New York from that if I am I mistaken no I think you're spot on yeah um, I think you you speak with a lot of like great entrepreneurs a lot of New Yorkers mm-hmm. a lot of people mm-hmm. like being a native yourself right mm-hmm. and I'm coming from a perspective of like wanting to learn myself because I'm not from New York right wanting to learn about New Yorkers wanting to learn about the people who live here and, and asking those questions so again very educational as you noted Yes. So I know that your podcast kind of plays on, you know, the show of Gossip Girl, which I was obsessed with. I literally was in high school when it came out. So I would rush to go home just to like watch it. What has been um, the biggest surprise now that you live in New York? And did you, you know, see the show as almost like an accurate portrayal in your mind of the New York City lifestyle? So crazy that you're asking this question about Gossip Girl because it's like the name that I chose, uh, Gossip Vista, it stemmed from Gossip Girl because um, I was living in LA. I loved Gossip Girl at the time. I come from a broadcast journalism background and specifically in entertainment. So I combined gossip and the term fashionista, Gossip Vista into one, right? And that's where it came from. And of course, the love for New York City and Gossip Girl. But um, I, I just, I don't relate to Gossip Girl 100%, you know, like the name is there, but, um, you know, coming here and, and living on the Upper East Side, specifically where Gossip Girl is shot, <laughs> um, it, it is what the show portrays, but you don't really know those type of people on a daily basis, right? So you don't, mm. I can't say that's, that's an accurate portrayal. 100% on my end from seeing it, but, um, you know, what the Upper East Side looks like, um, you know, people dressed up more, the preppy look and all that stuff. Like it's there for sure, besides other neighborhoods in, in the city. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you got married in New York, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where, where did you get married? Research. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, no, no. Um, so actually, it's interesting, my marriage story. So, you know, I've always loved New York, always wanted to live here, but we didn't make the trek until about two years ago, I'd say. And um, so, but we got married here in 2018 and I was like, okay, if we get married in New York City, we were living in LA and I was like, we get married in New York City and we have like a big shebang New York wedding, like we'll call it off and we don't have to move to New York City. Mm -hmm. So um, we did a wedding um, in New York City and all it did was like, just make me want to move here even more. So the place we got married was... um, on the Upper East Side at a church on the Upper East Side, oh, um, nice. which, which was amazing. Um, and then our reception was at 620 Loft, is it? mm-hmm. it's at the Rockefeller Center. So it, it was just very New York centric. That was the oh, whole God. point of the wedding. That's amazing because I feel like, I mean, I'm not married, but I feel like people usually choose wedding venues if like they live there, it's like their home or someplace 
destination wise, maybe they shared a specific experience or memory in that. But the mm-hmm. fact that you chose New York, it was almost as if New York was calling you. Mm-hmm. So it's so interesting. And aside from the podcast, you do have a full time job, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Would yeah. And talk about it. I mean, you don't need to talk about the company, but just um, <laughs> I guess, what do you do in that aspect? And do you feel like, you know, moving to New York motivated you to start the podcast? And I know that a lot of people in this um, world, the New York world, wears a lot of hats and like, we're such hustlers and we have different side projects. So has that been something new that you discovered when you were here or when you were in LA, you, you've always kind of had multiple projects? Okay. A lot of questions in one. I would try, <laughs> I would try to start here. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, my nine to five job is in digital health tech. So mm-hmm. I, I work in that in business development, uh, a lot of communication, a lot of question asking, pretty much like what I do for podcasting. Mm-hmm. So it's almost innate that that is natural, right? Um, and so that's my nine to five. And then my side hustle, my project, my passion, it's the podcast, it's New York City. And, and really, it's just still staying in that realm of the broadcast journalism, mm-hmm. where I, I get to kind of communicate with people, learn about things. So um yeah, in, in LA, I was always like this too. I didn't start a podcast then because mm-hmm. there's nothing that really um, I was fully passionate about, right? But when I moved to New York City, it, it just all aligned. It was like, I love New York City. I want to learn about New York City. I want to explore New York City. I want to talk to New Yorkers and people. So it just all kind of happened organically. Mm-hmm. And from your move so far, what has been the biggest challenge? Well, I signed a lease in the midst of the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think you're going to hear that often. Um, And so it really hasn't been the New York that I know because we got married here. We'd come here like a lot of times prior to this. So it's it's really been a different New York Mm -hmm. um, these past two years. It's 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 not where we I'm sure all would like it to be uh, at this point. But that's been the biggest challenge just being able to be out there, um, you know, having the city that never sleeps, never sleep, uh, meeting people, being social, all that good stuff, actually having an in-person work environment. I've worked remotely for two years. Tell me more about the podcast, because I know you are on a hiatus right now. You are going to be picking the back up, but how do you go about finding the topics? Um, And yeah, just how is it formatted? Just tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah. Okay. So the podcast, it's essentially what I like to say, um, you know, I love to continue to want to enrich the lives of New Yorkers by just bringing on more information about New York. And, you know, if you love New York City, you're going to love everything and anything about it. But at the same time, it's helping those who have ever wanted to move to New York City, uh, navigate the city, right? Learn about the city and, and just immerse yourself in all things New York City. So the structure is pretty much asking people, everything as to what their experience has been living in New York City Mm -hmm. and, you know, what they like, what they love, what they don't like, um, things they recommend. And then I love to learn about a specific expertise that they they have or are in, Um, whether, you know, I've had dating experts, I've I've had, um, you know, subway, uh, I won't say subway creatures, which it is (laughs) him, who who talks about navigating the the New York subway, Mm. just, just areas that you can learn more about, but you also want to learn more about and, and are experts within that. So um, that's the podcast. It, it's mostly, you know, it's, it's very structured, not as yeah. organic and shit chat, yeah. <laughs> you know? um, but it's because I am a reporter. I am a broadcast. Mm. Like I want, I want to ask all those questions. That I makes want to sense. Hear. Yeah. 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 I'm more of like a chit chat. Like literally if you and I were grabbing coffee and then we just like recorded a conversation because I feel like that's where for me personally, where the most yeah. like organic conversations happen. And it's funny you mentioned about like the subway because <laughs> I actually did this TikTok recently about like things only real New Yorkers will understand like subway edition. Mm-hmm. And I was talking about like Um, especially for like your go-to trains, you know exactly where to stand for the doors to open, you know exactly like which platform, you know, you're going to go. So you're not like running around. And I made a joke about like, New Yorkers don't ever really sit in the subway, but like, if we want to, we will get a seat. 
and how we like rarely hold a pose because it's just like in our nature to like balance it's like a little game that I would always have as a as a child taking the subway yeah. um so there are definitely like little nuances that you can pinpoint about what makes a New Yorker a New Yorker even as simple as an action like taking the subway so I love oh my that gosh. <laughs> I love that you noted all that because these are things I don't know about okay man <laughs> The subway creature did not note these things. And, you know, <laughs> it's great. We got to check out. Yeah, that yeah. Video. It's just my intake. I just think it's funny because um, the reason why it's funny we keep going back to subway is because I have this thought when I was taking the subway. Mm -hmm. And I was, this is obviously pre pandemic, but I would look okay. at everybody in the subway car and I was like, wow, we're all so different. And, you know, we're all immersed in our own worlds, right? Whether. Yep. I mean, majority of it is on our phone. A few are like reading. And I'm just like, we all have such an interesting story. And I had this weird vision of, you know, like a cartoon, you know, when they have those like bubbles and you like yeah. read their thoughts. And I was like, if only we, all of us like knew what we were thinking, because some people might have just got fired, might have just found the love of their life, might have just moved here. Like it's so crazy yet we're in the same place and we're still again in our own world the and I was another. yeah really inspired by um, humans of New York and yeah. then post secret so I say if they had a baby that's what the city confessions is about oh my gosh so that's, that's awesome wait so you said uh, humans of New York and who else post secret do you know about them uh-uh no. Okay, so it's created by Frank, some, I forgot, but I discovered um, it in the Tumblr days, like when I was in like mm -hmm. middle school, high school. So basically, um, it's a blog. Mm -hmm. And every Sunday, uh, he encourages people from all over the world to mail in a postcard with a secret. Mm -hmm. And it's anonymous. Um, okay. And he and he puts it on. But it's really interesting because of the choice of the postcard by the actual message in the postcard and just the variety in topics. It can be something silly. It could be something really, really deep, okay. really dark. And mm -hmm. every Sunday, I would just be so excited to read it because there are times when you find it really, really funny. And other times you're like, wow, this person totally understands how I'm feeling right now. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like what my inspiration was. And I love talking. So I was like, storytelling is like my thing. So that's how this podcast was born. Girl, that's amazing. And I'm upset you're telling us now because you're supposed to tell me this on my podcast. <laughs> but we have different audiences. So that's yeah. why it's great to like cross promote, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's so interesting because you say your podcast is to like get others to understand what it's like to like navigate the city. And for mm -hmm. you, did you have any tools and resources or were you kind of just thrown into it and you figured it out? Exactly. I did it. That's why I started the podcast. I had mm -hmm. no one I knew here, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that I could ask these questions to, that I could say, like, what's it like living in this neighborhood? What's it like, you know, what are the places to go to? Like, just, just tell me how to navigate the subway. <laughs> you know, what, what train is this? all these questions. And so I didn't have that. And so as I was here, I was like, you know, this, this is a tool I need to create, not only for myself, because I'm going to keep learning about New York every single day as I live here, but also for those that want to learn with me and, and want to just, you know, meet more New Yorkers, meet more interesting people, because it's like a fascinating city. Everyone mm -hmm. loves New York City, right? So that was just the thought. It's like, if I can help someone else not have to go through the pain I went through, then here we are, right? And how, like when you, so you didn't know anybody, like not a single soul? Not really. No, no. See, I, I well, I knew my that? wedding planner. I knew my wedding <laughs> planner. I knew someone else that I met from my wedding because I got married here just a little before it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, when I hear stories like that, because you're not the first to say that on my podcast, I'm always so, like, I admire you and other people who just, like, took a chance on New York because this is a city that's, you know, very tough, as we know. And I'm so grateful to, like, be here and call this my home because I said this in a previous episode but like none of us really get to choose our upbringing up until the point where we can maybe like financially emotionally like make that decision for ourselves yeah, but for the most part it's like a decision that we are just brought into it right and then to then choose where you want to live and your mm -hmm. environment is such a critical aspect and then you coming from California and LA it's, it's like 180 right 
Two different worlds, definitely. Yeah. Um, I've always been a really tough girl though. As much as like my, I think brand and persona shows peak and maybe lighthearted and entertainment. Like I am such a tough person. Um, and I've always known my heart and my essence has belonged to New York City. So I, I knew it was never going to be easy. Um, I don't care for easy. And um, yeah, definitely, like you said, uh, you know, people don't choose where they're born and where they come from. And then you get to choose later in life. And, and I think it's like, someone has said this before. It's like, when you come to New York and then it like eats you up, chews you up and spits you back out. And then you decide to, you know, no, I'm going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. That's when you know, okay, you were made for New York city because that's why a lot of people end up leaving. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it, it was too much to, yeah. Where do there. you think um, your hard exterior comes from? My, um, I think from just having parents who are immigrants, mm -hmm. my, you know, that is like huge. So there's a, a lot of adversity, a lot of things, you know, we've had to go through. So, I mean, I, I, I think that is a huge factor and just being a, a person, I'm the oldest of a couple of girls. So I'm like the protector as well. Right. So it's like that aspect, adversity, the protector, the, um, you know, just the hustler mentality and sense of how I was up, up, mm -hmm. brought up, that's kind of what created. And how many exterior. siblings do you have? I have three younger sisters. Oh my God, so weird. So I also have, I don't have three, but I have two sisters okay. and mm -hmm. it's all girls, but I'm the middle. Mm -hmm. So like, really? I'm telling you all of these like common yeah. like grounds that we're sharing is like insane. It's, okay, so I, is has there been a crazy story that you can share that it's obviously like such a New York thing? It could have it could only have happened in New York. Oh my god, it's so crazy that you're asking me this question because I ask this question myself and it always stumbles <laughs> people and they're like, I don't know where to start. Oh my god, I didn't know you asked this question. <laughs> no, no, here and there, but it's like you want to know this, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's New York. So what? What are the crazy? Um, I. Uh, I don't like super crazy. No, I don't. I don't think so. Like you give me one and then I'll see if I can come up with one. Do you have a crazy story? I'm trying to think because I feel like everything in New York for me is so normal. Mm -hmm. Like I know when people, you know, I think again, I don't know why we keep going back to the subway. This is going to be like the thumbnail, like something about New York City subway. But, um, you know, there's a lot of weird encounters that I've experienced on the subway but for me it's just like I just brush it off it's like normal whereas I know other people are like oh my god this is like insane I think the craziest was one time there was um like some type of crime happening in the car which is really scary because you feel trapped right. and there was I think like somebody would and what a a knife and I don't know if he was like trying to attack somebody it wasn't in my cart but it was the cart next to us and the subway obviously stopped. They made an announcement. And you can see who was like a tourist and who was a New Yorker because the New Yorkers are the ones who are calm. They're like, whatever, this happens every day. It's, it's no big deal. Yeah. Then you have these other people who are literally freaking out. Like you can see terror in their face. Not to say they're not justified for feeling that way. Um, obviously, the, you know, the cops came and everything. And again, when I, even me saying it out loud, I don't think it sounds crazy. <laughs> But I think if you actually digest it, no, that is crazy. No, so for it's sure. like situations like that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, and it's funny because you say, you know, being a New Yorker, it doesn't phase you. Mm. Um, I, I can't say anything has been like so crazy for me that I'm like, oh, oh my God, this, this is like crazy scary, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, besides reading some of the things we're seeing on the news right now yeah. like that's crazy that's crazy you know um but on an everyday basis I expect crazy whether it's a man peeing in the corner which <laughs> yeah. my husband says that's all that happens in New York City yep. from my husband and I being like somewhere all the way uptown and some woman running to grab his crotch um <laughs> you know out of nowhere um to like you know just your rear window seeing your neighbors and everything that's happening yeah. that's New York City landscape yeah. to you know, one day us like having, um, I think we had like the pilot off in our stove and we were smelling gas and we called the gas company and like two seconds, the fire ambulance and everything was here because they take their mm -hmm. fire um, thing serious here in New York City. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. I was like, this would have never happened in California. I can't even get them on until an hour later on the phone, you know? Yeah. Um, 
So just little things like that, that make New York, New York, and not so much crazy, but just, just the city. Unique. That. Yeah. yeah. And of course I have to ask you, I mean, it's the, the stupidest question, but the weather. So as an LA girl, like, what do you think? Because we're obviously recording in February. I mean, today's a gorgeous day, but we've had really, really tough, um, low temperatures recently. So like, how do you feel about that? Because um, I was talking to somebody and they were like, in California, if it rains, it's the end of the world. Like, they're like, oh, we got to go inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um, okay, so because I've been indoor for like two years, it, I really haven't, I don't feel mm. like I'm, I'm, I'm living the grind of the city weather. You know, like if I was going to work and running around town and on the subway and, you know, looked a mess by the like that I know to expect that because I did do that for a second um the weather in LA it's it's almost like you're always in your car you're always perfect you always have your AC on you know um if it does rain you know it it ruins everything for you Mm -hmm. but in New York that's everyday life like you are never going to be perfect and pretty and it's it's cold it's windy it's this you got to put on uh something so I've learned to live with that and um the cold i thought it would really kill me here i do go out in the cold it literally just wakes you up it really just puts a slap on your face and it keeps you going and once you walk enough and walk fast like you start getting hot and i I know and one of the crazy things about new york is like the stores it's almost like they try to roast Mm -hmm. you out of the stores right (laughs) it's like you're so freaking cold and then you go in and you're like fuck I'm so hot let me peel off a million layers and so um, I think the worst is the summer though like I would prefer to be well I don't know that's a really good question no I agree I'm I, I hate summer I, I'll take the cold over yeah. the summer in New York yeah yeah Just summers are sweaty and gruesome. yeah in subway mm-mm. not mm-hmm. a not a good good time <laughs> Yeah. No. Okay. Sure. So Mariano, my podcast is called the city confessions. Mm-hmm. And of course I have to ask you if you can share a city confession, what would that be? And I always tell everybody there's no right or wrong. This is a judgment free zone. It's however you receive the question. So it can be anything. And I would just, I'm curious because you're kind of like a new, like a new New Yorker. My city confession and like the only way I can take it is like, what what is my my city confession is, is um, just not being able to like live out my best life in New York City, right? To the extent that I want to, whether it's this pandemic, whether it's meeting more people, whether it's helping more people with my podcast. Like I I, I know something you ask is like, what keeps you up at night? Those things keep you up at night. Those Mm. things keep me up at night. Um, It's really just optimizing whatever time it is I have here in New York City because I don't know if it'll be forever, Mm -hmm. which I would hope or Mm -hmm. however long it's going to be. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel like that always happens to like anybody living in the city because you're always trying to climb this ladder that we all make for ourselves. And it's like, we get something and it's okay, but what's next? And I think the pandemic has really helped at least me to like slow down and truly celebrate all of our little accomplishments. Even like you showing up today is such an accomplishment. And I'm like, so happy Um, that we're having this conversation. Me too. Um, Yeah. And then I always end my podcast. Well, I started to do this new thing. It was inspired by Jay Shetty, but it's kind of like the like the fire round for New York. So uh-huh. I'll ask five questions and just answer it in one word or one sentence. Okay, cool. Okay. If you can describe New York City in one word, what would it be? Exhilarating. Favorite thing about New York? Um, the people. Worst thing. <laughs> um. Uh, nothing nothing Mm, that's a first uh (laughs) favorite restaurant Mm, okay so it's been on the media bit uh i like lilia italian in brooklyn Mm. that's that's good Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. oh my god that's like not that far from me but it's really hard to get a reservation Mm -hmm. um and their sister yeah oh it's really good then and then their Mm -hmm. sister restaurant is misi have you been there I haven't. I heard that of it. one is really good as well, but also really hard okay. to get a reservation. But mm-hmm. if you actually go in person, they will make they will be able to schedule a reservation instead of just waiting online. That's like what I've learned. Mm-hmm. So a little tip. Okay. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And my last question is: If you can thank New York City for one thing, what would it be? 
thank you for accepting me. Just take me in. Oh, I uh, love that, that. That, that's the biggest thanks I could give New York City. Oh my God. That's so lovely. Okay. And now is your chance to plug away. I'm obviously going to have all of your, of your information in the show notes, as well as if you guys are watching like through YouTube in the description. So be sure to expand on that. But uh, what can the world be on the lookout from you, Mariana, in the next few months or the rest of 2022? Yeah. Wow. I got to plug something in. I, <laughs> yes. I'm like, I don't even know where to start. So <laughs> as Marianne noted, um, I'm going to be going into my fifth season of my podcast, the Gossip Mesa podcast um, in March. So look out for that. Um, you can expect like all kinds of thrilling conversations with new people, whether it's, you know, uh, city officials, um, you know, more New Yorkers, just various landmarks and things. You can expect that. And um so follow there at Gossip Mista Podcast on Instagram. And then wherever you listen to your podcast, Gossip Mista, just drop in, say hi. I'm, <laughs> I'm open to any ideas and conversations you want to have about the city. I love it. I know I said that too. I'm like, wherever you listen to your podcast, because you can't like necessarily name every single platform. Right, right. Um, but yeah, and I think we are doing something on your podcast as well. So mm-hmm. that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Love Ooh. cross promotions. 100%. And yeah, with that being said, for everybody listening, thank you so much. I hope you all have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you again, Mariana, and thank stay you. tuned for next week's episode. All right, bye. Bye, everyone.